All right, we are ready for section 5.4, which is on special factoring techniques. There are certain types of polynomials that we call special polynomials that have special techniques for factoring. Uh, the first one of those is uh, a difference of squares. So I'm going to explain what that means. Um, something is a difference of squares if you have a perfect square for the first term and a perfect square for the second term and they are subtracted so that's why I call it difference because we're subtracting and uh, squares because we have perfect squares so mm, before what we've been factoring we have trinomials a lot right but this is a binomial there's no middle term now we could kind of think of this as the same way as we did the trinomial we could think the middle term is zero so we could say, what are two factors of negative 49 that add up to zero? Um, we could do that. Um, and what are your answers there? Uh, two factors of negative 49, if we do it that way, let's see, negative 49. Two factors of negative 49 that add up to zero. Well, we could have 7 and negative 7. So 7 plus negative 7 is zero. So what would that would give us then is we would have an x plus 7 and an x minus 7. So then we'd be done. So we could use the same technique we used before um, if your coefficient, leading coefficient here is uh, 1. So, um, but if it's not, then we can't really do that and we could also do it this way. So if you have a difference of squares, you can factor the difference of squares into two binomials where the first term of the two binomials is the square root of the first term of your difference of squares. So square root of x squared is x. So we put an x and an x. The second term of the two binomials is going to be the square root of the second term of your difference of squares. And you'll have a positive and a negative. Now another thing you can do is check to make sure this works out. You might say, well, it looks like we made it more complicated because we now have two binomials instead of one. But if we multiply these, x times x, x squared. x times negative 7 is negative 7x. We'd have 7 times x is a positive 7x. Those would cancel out. 7x plus negative 7x is 0. And then we have 7 times negative 7, which gives us the negative 49. So we can take the square root of the first term square root of the second term, those gives us our, give us our two numbers and we have a plus and a minus. So we have to recognize that something is a difference of squares um, so that takes a little bit of time I guess in practice um, hopefully you have lots of practice. Uh, so let's see. We'll look at this next one. Is it a difference of squares? Well 81 is a perfect square, right? x to the fourth is also a perfect square. If we square x squared, we would get a perfect, uh, we would get, if we square x squared, we would get x to the fourth. And 16 is a perfect square, right? Um, 4 squared is 16. So we have to think about what we multiply by itself to get 81x to the fourth. Well, 9 times 9 is 81, right? So we have a 9 and 9 x squared times itself is x to the fourth, so we have 9x squared, 9x squared. So now we've taken care of this first term, really, the square root of 81x to the fourth is 9x squared. And what do we multiply by itself to get 16? Well, that would be 4, right? Square root of 16 is 4. So we have a 4 and a 4. And when we factor a difference of squares, we get a plus, we have a plus and a minus. And you could check by multiplying these to make sure you end up with this. Basically what happens is the middle term cancels out. Now, sometimes when we're factoring difference of squares, there might be multiple steps. And we might not be able to stop at this point. So if we look here, um, this first binomial is a sum of squares. You cannot factor a sum of squares, despite what some people may think. Um, this first thing is unfactorable. But look at what we have here. It's another difference of squares. So we can continue to factor. So this 9x squared plus 4, we can't do anything with. It's a sum of squares, which cannot be factored. So I'm going to rewrite it. 9x squared plus 4. 
but the second binomial is another difference of squares, which means we can factor it into two binomials, just like we did in the last two examples here. So what uh, do we multiply by itself to get 9x squared? Well, 3 times 3 is 9, right? So we have a 3x and a 3x. 3x times 3x would give us the 9x squared. And then what do we multiply by itself to give us this 4 and this difference of squares? Well, that would be a 2, right? So we have a 2 and a 2, and we need a plus and a minus. So now if we look at this, this is our final factored form. We have factored all the difference of squares that showed up um, as we went through that process. So that was a little more complicated, but uh, manageable, hopefully. Um, now, let's look at number three. Is it a difference of squares? No. It's a sum of squares. We have a plus sign, not a minus sign. And if you have a plus sign, sum of squares cannot be factored. So if you see a sum of squares, guess what? We say it is prime. A prime polynomial is one that cannot be factored again. So this would be, um, so I spell prime right? Prime. Okay. Not factorable. If you see a sum of squares and you're asked to factor it, unless you can take out a GCF, you say it's prime, right? There are no common factors in 9x squared and 16, so we can't take out a common factor. So that is a special factoring technique with difference of squares. We need to make sure we recognize something is a difference of squares, and then we can use this technique. Now, let's see, the next one is a perfect square trinomial. So what is a perfect square trinomial? So a perfect square trinomial is one where we can factor the trinomial into two factors that are exactly the same. Okay. Now to recognize something as a perfect square trinomial, usually we recognize that the first term is a perfect square and the last term is also a perfect square. Now 169, you may not know this, but it is a perfect square, right? 13 times 13 is 169. And of course, z squared is a perfect square because z times z is a perfect square. So if you recognize that you have a trinomial where the first term is a perfect square and the last term is a perfect square, then you could try this. A lot of times those are going to be perfect square trinomials. So z squared, I'm going to use a z. I like to cross my z's so they don't look so much like twos. So z and z, um, and then 169 would be 13 and 13, right? And so we get a negative 26 in the middle, which means we need to have a negative for both of these. z minus 13, z minus 13. And we could check by multiplying these out. Now there's another way to write this. This is z minus 13 times z minus 13 which could be written as z minus 13 quantity squared, right? And so that's why they call it a perfect square, because you square a binomial to get the trinomial. Um, just like 4 is a perfect square because you square 2 to get 4, right? This trinomial is a perfect square because you square something to get it. Um, Alright, so uh, to recognize it again, the first term of a trinomial is a perfect square, the last term is a perfect square, and then to find these guys, you take the square root of the first term, square root of the last term, and you have to look at the middle term to determine what sign is going to be here. Okay, This is a minus, that's going to be a minus. Um, now you should always check, because if this 26 would have been anything else, if I would have had z squared minus like 12z plus 169, this would not work. So it is important to check. So z times z is z squared. Uh, negative 13z and another negative 13z, if you put those together, you get the negative 26z. And negative 13 times negative 13 is a positive 169. So either one of these answers would be OK. If you want to write it as the square of that binomial, you can. Or you can write the factor times itself. Let's look at the next one. So is it a perfect square trinomial? Well, maybe, right? So let's see. 
First term appears to be a perfect square. It's a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square. J squared is a perfect square. Last term, 4, is a perfect square, right? 2 times 2 is 4. Um, so, I have two binomials. We take the square of the first, square root of the first term. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of j squared is j. Right? So, 3j. And then we take the square root of the last term, 4, whether it be 2 and 2. And we're going to figure out what sign to use. Since this is a plus, I'm going to use a plus for both of them, right? Now we need to check, right? Just to make sure. So 3j times 3j gives us the 9j squared. 2 times 3j is 6j. 2 times 3j is another 6j. 6 and 6 is 12. So we have 12j. And then 2 times 2 gives us our 4. So using that FOIL method, we can check and everything appears to be good. And again, we can write this as 3j plus 2 squared. Quantity squared. All right, let's look at the last one. Well, let's see. You might say, well, 12 is not a perfect square, and you would be right. And 75 is also not a perfect square, and you'd be right about that. So why is this lumped in with these? Well, if you look at these three terms, what do we notice about them? Ah, we can factor something out of the three terms, right? So what can we factor out of these three? Let's see. 12 goes into 60. Does 12 go into 75? I don't think so, but let's just check. I'll use my calculator just in case. 75 divided by 12. Nope, it doesn't. But what does go into all three of these? Does 3? Yeah, 3 goes into all of them. And it's a lot easier to deal with these if there's not a negative for your leading term. So I'm going to factor out a negative 3 from all those. Uh, factor out a negative 3. That leaves me with what? Uh, 4 a squared. 60 divided by 3 is 20, right? So we have 20 a b. And 75 divided by 3 is 25, right? So minus 25. Okay. Oh, what did I do? I need a negative times a negative here, don't I? So that should be a minus sign. Ignore that plus sign there. So a minus sign here. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'll just rewrite the whole thing so it doesn't get confusing. So negative 3 times 4 a squared. And negative 3 times negative 20 is a positive 60. And then we factor negative 3 out of negative 75, and that gives me, what, 3 times 25, right? So negative 3 times positive 25 gives me the negative 75. All right, so I factored out a GCF first. That's always what we should look for is if, the, if there is a GCF we can factor out. Now, if we look at the trinomial that remains, it appears to be a perfect square trinomial. 4 a squared is a perfect square. 25 b squared is a perfect square. This negative 3 does not go away. It just hangs out outside here. And then we can probably factor this perfect square trinomial into two binomials. So let's see. 4a squared, we take the square root. That gives us 2a. So we have a 2a and a 2a. 25b squared, that gives us a 5b. So we have a 5b and a 5b. And then the sign in the middle looks like it's a negative, right? So we're going to use a negative and a negative. And let's always a good idea to check to make sure. Uh, so 2a times 2a gives us the 4a squared. 2a times negative 5b is a negative 10ab, right? And we have another one of those, another negative 10ab. A negative 10 and negative 10 gives us the negative 20. And then negative 5b times negative 5b gives us the 25b squared. So you use the FOIL method. You can kind of do that mentally to check, or you can use your calculator if you need to. So it appears that it works. Now, again, we could rewrite this. This answer would be fine, but a lot of people like to condense their answer and make it as, uh, I guess, as condensed form as possible. So we have the negative 3. And it's really, when we take this binomial times itself, we're really squaring that binomial. So we could write this as 2a minus 5b quantity squared.
All right, so those are some examples of, uh, first on this page, we started with the uh, difference of squares, um, and then we finished up with perfect square trinomials. So those are a variety of examples of those two. Um, next video, we'll deal with the back page of section 5.4, which will deal with uh, um, difference and sum of cubes. So it's the end of this video. We'll see you on the next page.